A common misconception in statistics is to think that correlation implies causation. Like, if more tall people have cats, you might think that means being tall makes people more likely to get a cat. However, simply knowing a correlation between height and cat ownership can't tell us which way the causality goes. It may instead be that having a cat causes people to grow taller. Or perhaps the real cause is something else altogether, like that the people and cats live on two separate islands, one a lush paradise with enough food for growing tall and feeding pet cats, and the other a wasteland that limits both height and cat ownership. The point of examples like this is that noticing a correlation between two things doesn't imply that one of those things causes the other. Hence the common refrain, correlation doesn't imply causation. And it's true, it doesn't. But this often repeated mantra leads to another common misconception. The idea that you can't infer any causality from statistics. You can. I mean, it's quite reasonable to think that if two things are correlated, there's likely some reason, even if a single correlation can't tell you. Sometimes you can infer the causality from additional information, like knowing that one thing happened before the other. But you can also infer causality directly from correlations. You just need more than one, together with something called causal networks. Like in our cat height island example, we know that cat ownership and height are correlated, but we don't know what the cause of that correlation is. If we don't know anything else, then there are 19, yes, 19 different causal relationships that could explain the situation. 20 if you think the correlation is just an accident. So correlation certainly doesn't imply causation yet. However, perhaps we know two other things. First, suppose people born on a particular island stay there, so their height doesn't influence what island they live on, and we can rule out the relationships where height influences island. Second, suppose that on either island by itself, there isn't any correlation between height and cat ownership. Then we can rule out all the options where height and cats influence each other directly. This leaves us with just two options. Either the islands are the causal explanation for both height and cat ownership, maybe as before one island is a lush, healthy paradise for both people and cats, or else cat ownership is the causal explanation for the islands, which are the causal explanation for height. Like, maybe an abundance of cats turned the island into a paradise, thereby influencing the height of future cat owners. So starting with 19 possible causal relationships, we used correlations to narrow things down to just two options. Not bad. And if we knew something about the timeline of when cats and people arrived at the islands, we might be able to narrow it down to just one option. Of course, this is just a simple example, but for any group of things, you can use the various correlations between them, or lack of correlations, to eliminate some of the possible cause and effect relationships. And that's how correlations can imply causation. There is one problem, though. Some experiments in quantum mechanics have correlations that rule out all possible cause and effect relationships. We'll have to save the details for a later video, but until then, here's what that saying really should be. Correlation doesn't necessarily imply causation, but it can if you analyze it with causal models. Except maybe not in quantum mechanics? I've got a little more about statistics and causality after this, but first, I'm excited to introduce the very relevant sponsor for this video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a problem-solving website designed to help you practice and learn math and science via guided problems, puzzles, and quizzes. I know that sounds kind of nerdy, but the truth is that the only way to truly learn and understand much of math and physics is to actively work through the material yourself. Videos only get you so far. And Brilliant does a brilliant job of making that easy, sneakily enticing you into doing math and physics problems problems by means of intriguing questions structured for all ability and knowledge levels. I say this from experience, because if you haven't done a problem for a few days, Brilliant will start sending you attention-grabbing puzzles, and I've been sucked in by quite a few of them. If you want to try out Brilliant, which I recommend, heading to brilliant.org slash minutephysics will let them know you came from here, and you can check out their weekly puzzles or their courses on probability, the physics of the everyday, classical mechanics, gravitational physics, and so on. Hey, glad you're still here. In case you're interested, there's a footnotes video covering a few things that got cut out of this one, like feedback loops and correlations that arise just by chance. The link's on screen and in the video description.